Hello everyone, my name is Veronica and um, I am from Punkfish Diving and Punkfish Academy. We have a small dive center on Canary Islands and do a lot of decompression theory online. So after watching the videos Woody um, shared here about the gradient factors and uh, all that stuff, which I think is quite interesting, I wanted to share one point that I think is crucial for us to understand that whatever we can do um, to have a lower risk of getting decompression sickness or to dive like as safe as possible, we can never really know what exactly will go on in our bodies as a big part of decompression theory is still very, very unknown. So when we know that there are limits for our dives, when we get to a no decompression limit or when we make our no decompression limit a little bit shorter by using a lower gradient factor high, that means we are just playing with a risk that is statistically well known, but we don't really know anything about what is happening in our actual body on this actual dive. Um, this is a little bit uh, hard to understand or like it's easy to understand, but it's hard to accept because we all would love to just know what we can do to be really safe and like to accept that in some moments we just don't really know it is a little bit hard but well this is how things are let's have a look on the connection of bubbles and actual dcs and what i have here for you is a little image um, that I stole from David Doulet. Okay, I did copy it. It's not stealing it. I cite him. Um, from um, a publication about advances in decompression theory. And David Doulet is one of the leading scientists in decompression theory in this moment. And what he did here is not a scientific study. It's just a data collection from different studies that have been done in the last uh, decades and what do we have here we have like people doing dives dives that are meant to provoke bubbles and that are meant to provoke single cases of dcs because they were meant to um, compare different aggressive diving profiles and we have little dots every dot is one dive and is a bubble measurement after a dive here vge grades bubble grades after dives from zero no bubble to four lots of bubbles um, and every line is one diver so it's arranged by persons doing the same dive and what do we see here we have some people like here like here and as well here who have very constant bubble grades after the same dive but we have a lot more people who have like some variations like sometimes no bubbles sometimes a little bit of bubbles sometimes grade three, sometimes grade four. And then we have this bunch of people who can end up with something in between zero and bubble grade, even bubble grade four, something in between no bubbles at all and lots of bubbles, the same person and after the same dive. What does this mean? It does mean um, that we can not say that after a certain dive profile you will have certain amount of bubbles the relation between bubbles and a certain dive profile is rather chaotic so the same dive profile can provoke 
everything between no bubbles and lots of bubbles in different persons. And the same dive profile can even provoke everything between no bubbles and lots of bubbles in the same person on different days. So it is not clear that certain dive profiles will make you have a lot of bubbles. And then the next thing is, it is not even clear that lots of bubbles mean DCS. It's not that straightforward. If you look here, there are these tiny red dots, just six of them in between this lots of bubbles that has been measured. And just these six tiny little dots are actual DCS. Everyone else had a lot of bubbles, but they did not have any symptoms, just nothing. So bubbles does not necessarily mean you get banned. And a certain dive profile does not necessarily give you more or less bubbles. There is something more in the dive and in your body at this specific day that makes the difference between lots of bubbles, no bubbles, or a little bit of bubbles. And this other part that there must be is something that is just not yet really known. There are studies about inflammatory markers. There are studies about endothelial dysfunction. There are studies about a lot of things that could have a certain influence on this. But honestly, we do not yet know this. So um, if you see something like, hey, with uh, certain um, gradient factors, like in between 1 and 49, you just get less and smaller bubbles, or in between 50 and 100, you get more and larger bubbles. This is just a very big simplification and has actually nothing to do with the reality of your body on an actual dive. You will never know how many bubbles you actually you will have after one specific dive. You can know how many bubbles you have if you measure them. But this will not help you to predict if the next day you will have this kind of bubbles again. So very careful with, with this. Why do I insist so much in, in this point? It is because I think um, we have to accept that even if we try our very best to dive safely, uh, as there is a lot of unknown components in decompression, um, we cannot have this safety of, hey, I do set my gradient factors to a certain point and then I will never have DCS. We just cannot do this. We can never guarantee that nothing will happen. There are just some things we know that will make our dive a little bit safer or the risk a little bit lower. So we know for sure that a lower gradient factor high leads to a lower risk of having DCS. That's it. That's what we definitely know from statistics, from accident analysis. It does not mean if you have a very dive to a very low gradient factor high, you will never get DCS, but it means your risk is lower. And then we know some things about the gradient factor low, but this is something we have to discuss apart from the bubbles because this gets really complicated. So I hope this did clarify a little bit the point of this bubble mystery and yeah, dive safe and have fun.